This episode of Bouts Talking Bouts is brought to you by Bare Knuckle Betting Shark. Winning parlays. If you're looking for them in BKFC, you got to be checking out BK Bet Shark. Here's the thing. $50 buys, you get a personalized bet slip. It's based on your own budget. You can be flexible. It is what works for you. And this guy's got the receipts. You can check out all the winning tickets. You can peep them, and you can do so at Bare Knuckle Betting Shark. Check him out on Instagram and get with it. Got them personalized betting slips going on, $50 buys. All right, on this episode of Bare Knuckle Radio, very excited to be talking to an individual who is readying for quite the massive card, to say the very least. BKFC 56 looms, and it goes down on December 2nd, and also readying to close out 2023 and looking towards a lot of great things in 2024. So I figured I'd have BKFC figurehead David Feldman on Bare Knuckle Radio to talk a bit about that. How's your day going there, Dave? Uh, it's going great, you know, just a lot of last minute stuff for uh, crossing our T's and dotting our I's and getting everything ready for the show on Saturday. Very, very excited about it. The stacked card, 11 stacked bouts, six potential main events. Um, just just really, really excited about the way things are going right now in Salt Lake. Yeah, and I mean, what is it like to, I guess, be like readying for this moment? Because I guess the context of this interview with it being fight week and i mean a huge year for the company would be kfc 41 kind of being that previous representation of the biggest show in company history like how does it feel to you know i guess within the same calendar year i guess deliver a card that's almost you know usurping that in a certain sense i mean two great cards but i mean pretty impressive yeah man you know what it is it's like it's seeing everything come together it's tough. Look, it's, it, I'm not going to sugarcoat this thing. Like, it's like death sometimes. You know, a week of the fight, two weeks before the fight, putting everything together, fights fall out. You have to make sure everything's in place. Um, are you marketing right? Are you doing everything right to get people interested, to hype the fight up? Do you have the funding for the fight? Like, everything that we have to do to put this thing together that the fans don't see because they're not supposed to see it. They're supposed to see that great event that's going to happen on Saturday night. But leading up to that, is, you know, it's, it's certainly not easy. But it's so rewarding come Saturday night when you see, you know, we call it the climb. The climb is two weeks before, and then when you get there and the event happens and you made it up to the top and you get to enjoy that great night with, I think, anticipated 8,500 to 9,000 screaming fans in Salt Lake City, it's going to be a memorable, memorable moment moment for all of us at BKFC. And it seems like a lot of great things are to come, obviously, with this card, but even in a general sense, like I was seeing some kind of recent posts about some pretty interesting looking meetings. Like I know you've been talking about wanting to get like a TV deal going for a little bit now. It seems like there's been some good meetings with like DAZN and Fox Sports and Fox Deportes. Like, can we expect like some news breaking in a certain bit in regards to like a TV deal? Is that maybe something you'd be like rolling out for 2024 at some point? Is that still an ongoing thing? I guess I'm curious about that. Yeah, I mean... We're in great talks with um, especially two, if not uh, three now, um, networks slash OTT platforms that um, that could really, really widen our reach. Um, and we expect to um, culminate them at some point to, by the end of this year and start in the uh, second quarter of 2024. Um, things are looking really great for us. We've already been doing stuff with Fox already with Fox Support this and having great viewership there. And we're going to extend that partnership. Um, hopefully it extends into some really, really big things that we're talking about now. Um, and the other two platforms are, are really very, very big for us as well. So wherever we land, it's going to be, you know, it's, it's definitely going to be a, um, a great place for us to be because it's going to have so many combat sporting fans and so many just fans in general that we're going to have a reach to rather than just be confined to the app. Although we're not giving up on the app, we're still going to have, you know, 40 plus shows on the app next year. And then we're hoping to do a series of maybe 12 fights outside the app on one of these networks. And I think that, like I said, I think it's going to widen our reach. It's going to really get the um, mainstream people that aren't really familiar with what we're doing to um, get interested in what we're doing, to become a fan of bare knuckle fighting, and also to educate them on what it is so they have a chance to become a fan. So we're very, very excited about um, three potential things that could happen in early, uh, actually late 2023 into early 2024. Yeah, very interesting. So maybe something we'd be getting insights on within the next few weeks, even. Yeah, absolutely it is. Um, 
great, great conversations. Look, everybody's interested in the product now. You know, I think we were lucky enough to be able to mainstream this thing enough to break the negative perception on what bare knuckle fighting is, right? It came in, you come in with it, and if you don't know what it is, you have a very negative perception that it's a street fight, it's a bar fight, it's brutal, it's, you know, deadly, it's so many different injuries, and it's really anything but that. You know, it's a very well-calculated, um, sweet, you know, sweetest science is what I call it, um, of, of combat sports to be able to really pick your shots is it brutal? It's definitely brutal. It's bloody, but it's not very, very dangerous. And to be able to educate the fans on that, I think that's what's changing the dynamic on these conversations. Because look, three years ago, with three of the same people I'm talking to right now, they wouldn't even pick up my call. Two years ago, you know, they picked up my call and said that's not for us. Last year, we said, ah, let's just see a little more. And this year, we're, you know, really down into negotiations right now. Yeah, just so much growth. I mean, even growth in that particular regard, as you were kind of outlining there. But I also thought it was interesting. I mean, not like super recent per se, but thought it was cool that there was like official unified bare knuckle fighting rules approved by the ABC. I feel like in a regulatory sense and also a growth sense of the sport. I was talking to Sean Wheelock about this the other day, actually, just how huge that is for the growth of the sport. So love to see it. Oh, that was huge for us. Like that was that, that was literally groundbreaking for 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 bare knuckle fighting, right? Because we're not the only promotion in town. We are the you know the biggest and the most recognized right now, but we're not the only promotion. There's a lot of other bare knuckle promotions that are educating people on what bare knuckle is and get and getting them to become fans of the sport. So for us to have unified rules along with the association of boxing commissioners, I mean that went went such a long way because a lot of the guys that were teetering back and forth on the fence, which way do I go? They all leaned in the right direction once those rules got voted in. So expect to see two or three major, major regulatory announcements here in the next um, 14 to, to uh, 28 days. Yeah, I was going to say, the stuff you guys have on the go, like I'm hearing a reality show, documentary series, BKFC video game apparently close to being launched. I mean, if you're going to make a, an interviewer character, maybe slide me in there. I'll, I'll give away my intellectual property. I'll give my, away my image to that. Sure, man. Absolutely. Yeah, look, we got a lot of really great things. All the things that we're talking about doing right now are not things that, okay, this is cool and, you know, let's do it. It's like things that are going to widen our fan base, right? Like, I think a video game could market us better than almost anything else out there. And then you couple it with a docking series or a reality show mixed in with that. I think you get the opportunity to get these other fans that never really knew what it was. Now they have a chance of not only recognizing what it is, learning about what it is, but following the journey of these fighters. Now they're going to have an opportunity to plan out follow the journey of these fighters from where they come in the BKFC tryouts, where they go up to the BKFC prospect show and then ultimately to BKFC and then hopefully become stars in the BKFC and also follow the journeys of some other fighters that we have in the organization. Just the opportunity to follow these fighters and let the fans get to know these guys, I think really invests the fans into the fighters and makes them want to really follow the journey of these guys. Yeah, just incredible stuff, but Definitely want to talk about this card. There's probably some people out there who are like, get to the card. But, I mean, some incredible stuff going on in a big picture sense. But, I mean, definitely want to talk about this Mike Perry, Eddie Alvarez fight. I mean, the King of Violence title on the line. It seems like there's a lot attached to this fight, too, even in the future, potentially. Like, there seemed to be some indication that maybe a shot at David Mundell's title could come after this with, like, a win from Perry or potentially even Alvarez. I guess, like, what are your thoughts on this fight overall? It seems like one that's really garnering a lot of attention, understandably so. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm really excited about it. Look, I do this thing in, you know, bare knuckle fighting. I'm, I'm putting everything I have into it, every time I've ever had, every bit of energy I have, and I put into it each and every event to make it really great for the fighters and the fans, right? Now we're like, okay, they said these are the two most violent guys that have fought in BKFC, and Ariel Hawani was like, hey, what about the King of Violence? And I was like, man, that's great. Let's make this for the King of Violence Championship. Let's have some fun with it, right? So we're having a little bit of fun with it. We're calling it the King of Violence Championship. And what two better contenders to fight for the King of Violence Championship than really two of the most violent guys that, that, that are ever in combat sports, that's Mike Perry and Eddie Alvarez. We'll see what happens after this fight. If Eddie wants to go down and wait, wants to stay at this weight, 
you know, we'll see how he performs, right? We'll see if Mike Perry can, you know, compete with a guy like Eddie Alvarez who's been in there with so many different world champions. So we're going to see a lot. We're going to find, I, I feel like we're going to find out a lot about Eddie Alvarez and Mike Perry as it pertains to bare knuckle on Saturday night, whether, you know, really the direction that they're going to go and really what they're made of. I think we're really going to find out about that on Saturday night. And that's really what I'm most looking forward to. And then we have five other supporting you know, fights that are, that could be main events on any one of our cards. On any one of our cards, we have six potential main events on this card. So I'm excited from Jimmy Rivera to Jeremy Stevens to Kai Stewart versus Howard Davis, Arnold Adams versus Nick Terrell, the rematch of Christine Faria versus Beck Rawlings, Ben Rothwell versus Todd Duffy, and obviously Eddie Alvarez versus Mike Perry. Six potential main events, six fights to really get excited about. And forget about the five undercard fights that are all very evenly matched that could all be fighting in the And so I think this is, in fact, our best card we've ever put together at BKFC. Yeah, for sure. And I feel like I'd be remiss if I didn't touch on this because you were talking about how you really, you know, put your all into the company for sure. And I mean, I think one of the big stories coming out of BKFC 41 was just like refinancing the home in order to get the event off and stuff like that. And I mean, if this is a little too inside baseball, obviously feel free to not answer if you choose. But I'm curious if maybe there has since been that certain like maybe infusion of capital after like BKFC 41 from like that Triller deal like I mean what's going on with that I mean hopefully you're not refinancing your home again for this one I guess look man I'm always I'm always we're always you know putting everything we have into this thing whether it's refinancing finance our home putting everything we have into it we're doing it until we get to that point right now we're at a very pivotal point in the career for, for BKFC I think we um, became a mainstream player in combat sports right now and we're selling tickets, we're getting viewership, we're doing everything that we're supposed to do, and I think that at the end of this year, we really turn, I'm going to, in, in, I'm going really on a world tour in, in um, December and January, meeting with major investors, like, in, they call them institutional investors, not just guys with money, but institutions that want to sink money into BKFC now to grow this thing, so I think we're at a great spot where, hopefully, fingers crossed, we get through this fight, and we get, you know, through the holiday season, and next easier for us but a little bit of financially easier for us where we can we work with that roadmap that we design every year we can actually execute that roadmap and don't have any any speed bumps in the way or, in, or any sharp right or left turns and we we are able to really um get that roadmap and just and, and, and just you know make everything on that roadmap happen and i think we're going to be able to do that in 2024 like i said we have some really really big um really like awesome guys and big companies that want to get involved with BKFC in 2024. So I think you're going to see exponential growth in 2024, and I think you're going to see um, a bigger, way, way bigger team here at BKFC because we are doing more than double the events we did in, in 2023. So we're, we're bringing a lot of guys on, and I think uh, 2024 is going to be a really standout year for us where we expand in every single avenue in, in bare knuckle fighting. Yeah, and as you're talking about that, I immediately think of the international growth. I mean, a lot of great things done already with, like, UK, Thailand, I mean, Bulgaria, pseudo-recently. But it seems like there's a lot of new countries targeted for 2024. And, yeah, just a lot of different interesting tryouts in South Africa. And, I mean, localized connection to me, a lot of Canada action. I mean, there's that prospect card, you know, coming up. So, I mean, yeah, love to see it. A lot of great international growth, it seems like, is kind of in line for 2024. Yeah, for sure. Listen, it doesn't mean we're going to continue doing fights at all these locations. What we're doing is we're going to different spots around the world, and we're going to find out the ones that really catch on, the ones that have the fan base, and the ones that we have to have an opportunity to grow revenue there as well. Bulgaria was great for us. I think we found another home in Bulgaria. We had over 7,000 people at, the, at our first event in Bulgaria, so that one worked out really well. We're launching uh, February 3rd. It's going to be BKFC South Africa in Cape Town, so we're going to see how that one works out. If that one does the same thing that Bulgaria did, we'll keep going back there. We just come off of um, Bukal versus Sanchai, um, a major, major fight in um 
sport bare knuckle fighting um, and launching the Muay Thai for Thailand. So that was that was huge for us as well. We're launching Mexico in April. We're going to do DKC in Mexico with a with a big um, television player in Mexico. So we got a lot of really great things coming up. And like I said, we're going to do these shows. We're going to see which ones pan out, and then when we get to 2025, we'll know where, where we really want to land internationally and. And that's where we're going to put all the effort in and grow in those those certain territories and markets. Yeah, and you mentioned the Buakau Sanchai fight, one that obviously garnered a tremendous amount of focus, understandably so. I mean, definitely a pair of legends. But in some of the, I guess, subsequent material after that fight, it seemed like you enjoyed the fight. But I mean, it seemed like the sentiment also is kind of rooted in bare knuckle MMA as well, where it's like, you know what, I appreciate it. I love combat sports, but. I feel like, I guess, what I want to promote is more akin to, like, that bare-knuckle boxing specific focus. But I guess all that being said, is there still that, you know, desire forward to just, I guess, entertain different forms of bare-knuckle combat? Like, the bare-knuckle Muay Thai obviously resonated well. Is there thoughts to do, I guess, promotional efforts for, like, other forms of bare-knuckle combat with the predominant focus being on bare-knuckle boxing? Yeah, not right now. I think that, look, we gave it a shot, and I think it's something that people are interested in. But what we did is we lost a little focus. So we got to focus on what we're doing right now, and we got to continue to focus on Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship and the rules and regulations that we have set for, for Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship and grow that. And once we grow that to a point where we can say, okay, now let's go over and try something else. Not that it actually performed well. We I think we had almost 4 million live views on that fight. So that was sensational for us. But I don't want to lose focus, and I think doing these other things sometimes can make me lose focus. So I'm just trying to stay focused, you know, see the pot of gold at the end of the rainbow and get there. And then once we get there, then we can start spreading it out a little bit more. Yeah, and I mean, talking about, like, focus and clarity, just redirecting the focus to BKFC 56, it seems like that case is very much, or that's going to be the case rather for the heavyweight division. I mean, since like Alan Belcher has kind of gone off to do like glove boxing and more bare knuckle MMA, it would seem like the Adams versus Terrell rematch, I mean, obviously that'll set up the champion, but it seems like there's potential title eliminator stakes for Ben Rothwell versus Todd Duffy as well. So it seems like it really gives that clarity to the division going forth into 2024. Yeah, we're bringing a lot of new heavyweights in. I mean, like I said, you know, we focus on this and we focus on that, and sometimes we lost focus on what we really should have been focusing on. Then we're going to really refocus on building all these divisions right now and not building other sports. So when we focus on just building these divisions, we're going to bring a lot of heavyweights in. We have a lot of them right now ready to sign internationally, domestically, and I think it's going to be an exciting time for the heavyweight division in 2024. Yes, the winner of Ben Rothwell versus Todd Duffy giving it a great, exciting fight, which it's going to be hard not to be, right? So as long as it's a good, exciting fight, we're probably going to see the winner of that fight fight the winner of the heavyweight championship for the heavyweight championship, and um, I think a lot of people will be excited about that. But again, they both have to be exciting fights because we're always looking at giving the fans exciting fights, and if we can't give them exciting fights, we're not going to give it to them. Yeah, I mean, I think you guys are good at, like, I guess, curating the card so as to facilitate those big, exciting matchups, which, I mean, to that point also, like, the idea of a possible, and from what I can tell, a fairly likely Chad Mendez return for 2024, I mean, that fits within that in the sense of another proven action fighter, so I feel like you guys all have a good eye for that, large in part. Yeah, we have a lot of guys that, that we're looking at, but like a Chad Mendez, guys like that, um, we're definitely in the chat in his market, and he, um, he has one more fight with us, and he retired. But I think you know you could see Chad Mendez back. We have some other main, major guys. Actually, one we're going to announce later on today that that was signing, and then a lot of other major guys that are going to be a part of uh, the Knuckle Fighting Championship in 2024. So we got a lot of great names, um, and we're building from the ground up with this with the tryouts, the prospect series, and you know, leading them into BKFC. So we're growing from both ends. We're going to come from the top down and we're going to come from the bottom up and we're going to meet in the middle there and we're going to have one hell of a product in TS24. Ah, I mean, you could announce it a bit earlier today if you want. <laughs> uh, contract signed yet, or, or I could have gave it to you, but it, it's just, it's not signed. It should be signed any minute. Yeah, no, I'm being, I'm being silly. You're usually good at giving me like some sort of breaking news, something to kind of go off of, giving me different kind of previews for upcoming cards and stuff like that. So no, definitely 
just being silly, but I mean, you talk about the heavyweight free agency, and I feel like it's such an exciting time. I mean, heavyweight combat sport is always exciting, but just some of the different, I guess, like free agents that. You know what, you know what though, Dylan? Heavyweight combat sports can be very, very exciting or it can be very, very dull. So you got to yeah. find the right guys. Like, it's not all just big heavyweights, because some of them are big heavyweights that want to clinch and grab and walk the guy down and not stand there and bang. And. You know, our job is to find the guys that want to stand in the middle of the ring and bang it out, and that's what we have to do. And that's why it's not as easy for us because some of these guys talk like I'm going to knock everybody out, and they go in there and it's a whole different game for them. So it, you know, it, it it it's definitely a lot of due diligence we have to do on finding the right guys for this. Yeah, no, very fair for sure. I guess like in trying to be mindful of your time, like a couple more I might want to touch on here. There was something that. I mean, I don't even know why I was checking out this interview. I guess I was just kind of checking out some of the older interviews you've done to kind of prepare for this one. But I checked out a Chris Van Vliet interview that you did around two years ago. And you were saying like, oh, I probably have like three or five years left in the promoter role, like maybe be a consultant after that. Have you since amended that timeline or are we still on track with that aforementioned timeline? You know, I mean, I kind of probably meant that we're three or three to five years away from being able to bring someone in to kind of take the reins with me and give me a little bit of free time. Um, we're probably you know, a year off track of that. Well, not on the five year mark, but on the three year mark. So we're probably still about two years out from that. But I think, um, I'm not looking at stepping down. Look, I love this. I built this. This is my baby. And when I mean it's my baby, it's like, I, I really nourish it. Like it's my baby. I give it everything I got. And, it's not something that I think I could walk away from and let somebody else just, you know, take the reins and run it. Now, that doesn't mean that I don't need to have some, some time freed up because, you know, I am getting older and I want to I wanna be able to enjoy life a little bit too with my family and I don't want to just give it everything to this. So I think we're probably uh, about three years out from, from being at a point where we can all step back a little bit and, you know, bring new faces in here and new people in here to kind of help run this with us. But that only happens if we grow the way that we're supposed to grow in the next two years, which I don't see any reason why we're not. And, um, you know, we're going to see as it comes. But as, as hard as it is, as, as much as we saw her to get all this stuff done, it is as rewarding as it is for an event like we're going to have on Saturday night. Um, BKFC 56 here in uh, Salt Lake City, it's going to be the biggest, if not the second biggest, uh, fighting event we've ever done in the company's history and we put a lot of time effort work and money into this event to make it happen the right way and i can't wait to celebrate on uh sunday and you know celebrate with my family and just really enjoy everything that we built and you know go on to have a uh, stellar 2024 you know that's kind of really what everything boils down to and just such a cool year with like the five year anniversary ringing in in like the earlier part of the summer there. Just, yeah, such a banner year for the company, it would seem like. I mean, and especially like the earlier kind of like advocacy <clears throat> sort of period you were in where like Sean Wheelock was more of like a consultant and trying to, I guess, like advocate for it on like a regulatory level, figure out how to, you know, really get it off the ground. So, I mean, just incredible stuff to see, like, where it's at now. I mean, how does it feel for you to kind of, I guess, consider all those factors? I mean, you're talking about how there's still a lot to do with this card and the stresses, which are understandable, but is there a certain ability to smell the roses, Pseudo? Yeah, it's funny. Me and Sean actually did a, a, a tour of a bunch of commissions in the past couple of weeks, and we made some really big things happen. Like I said, there are going to be some of the things that we're going to announce here. Listen, I really take my head off to Sean Wheeler. A lot of people don't know how integral he was in getting this sport legal with me. Um, he was my right-hand man at that time as far as getting regulatory done for this, and he really pushed and he gave a lot up for it. So, you know, I take my head off to Sean Willock so much for this. He deserves a ton of credit for his success at BKFC, um, regulatory, and, you know, a lot of other things that we did. So, um, to just kind of stand back and smell the roses, there's no time to stand back and smell the roses. You know, we really can't do that. We just have to keep pushing because there are other promotions out here coming out with different types genres of, of bare knuckle and different bare knuckle promotions and you know we gotta we gotta keep on our toes and and make sure that we're giving the viewers the best product we can give them make sure we're getting the best fighters that we can get and make sure we're developing this thing like we have to develop it so you know there's not a lot of time i mean every once in a while i do go on the computer and i and i search some of the accolades that we did over the past five years and i'm like man we came a long long way and I couldn't be any happier. And like I said, this Saturday is going to be an opportunity for me to see, you know, eight to 9,000 screaming fans in an arena where 
you know, we did a little more than 10% of that five years ago. And now we're, we've, we've grown to a place where we can go to arenas now, right? We don't have to go to ice skating rinks and ballrooms. We can go to arenas and, and sell them out and not have a problem selling them. And that's a great, great film for me and the organization. Yeah, also shout out to Brian Pedersen for being the first commissioner to sanction BKFC. Oh, he's my guy, man. Look, he, he gave me the break. He said, I like what you're doing. I like what you're talking about. I get it. Let's get this thing rolling. And he, he, he actually came to BKFC 41 in Denver because it was right down the street from him. And uh, he enjoyed it. And he said, man, I'm so glad that I was able to be a part of the growth of this thing. Great guy. Really, really good, good human being on top of everything he did for me. So I certainly will never, you know, stop thanking Brian Pedersen for what he did to uh, get this thing broken through. Yeah, for sure, man. And I mean, my apologies. I kind of lost track of time a little bit. I always feel like there's so much I want to talk to you about, but definitely want to be mindful of your schedule too, man, with it being fight week and all. So I guess I'm curious if there's... Sorry, go ahead. I got about, I got about three more minutes. Oh, okay, right on. I mean, I guess I was just going to like kind of put it in your court and see if there was like maybe a final I guess thought you wanted to add as we were kind of wrapping up like maybe something that we haven't you know touched on as of yet nah man you know I just I want to be able to encourage people to really follow their dreams man and, and forget about the growth of, of this and burn up a fighting right now but just as a human uh, as a human touch right now like you know things are going to get you down in life you're going to you're going to be at a point in your life sometimes where you where you don't want to keep going but if you can see the light at the end of the tunnel man I encourage you to give everything you have to to your dreams and really try as hard as you can to make them come true because look this was a dream this was like a literal dream that kept getting stomped on 28, 29 times and then I just kept pushing and I found a way to make it happen so I just want to encourage people that are going for something in life to go for it man and if you go for it and really work your ass off and don't let the naysayers you know put you in a bad spot you can succeed and that's what i want to do and that's what this saturday night was really all about everything we have in this event like i said like we did on 41 it's the same thing everything that we have that we put into this event it's going to be an incredible event and december 2nd um at bkfc.com you can get all the viewing um, credentials. It's going to be on pay per view on all the uh, cable satellite providers in the United States and Canada, and all our app subscribers are getting it for a discounted price. It's just it's going to be a phenomenal event. We're looking forward to this, and this is me putting everything I had my whole life into this event. So I encourage people to please support BGFC, please support the fighters, and and check out this amazing event. And maybe this is a bit anecdotal to me, but I feel like this is becoming a bit more of a thing like I feel like BKFC is like really interwoven into that culture of like you know inviting a bunch of lads over and maybe having a couple adult beverages maybe a little pizza kind of thing like I've for instance got you know a little gathering here coming over and it's all guys who are just really interested in BKFC and like really wanting to see it and it really is turning into that kind of thing like that communal sort of component so yeah love to see that we'll definitely be posted up with the lads watching the card Awesome, man. Well, I, I always appreciate your support. Thanks for the interview. And, man, um, hope you enjoyed the fight. It's going to be a great time. We'll talk next week. This episode of Bouts Talking Bouts is brought to you by Bare Knuckle Betting Shark. Winning parlays. If you're looking for them in BKFC, you got to be checking out BK Bet Shark. Here's the thing. $50 buys, you get a personalized bet slip. It's based on your own budget. You can be flexible. It is what works for you. And this guy's got the receipts. You can check out all the winning tickets. You can peep them, and you can do so at Bare Knuckle Betting Shark. Check him out on Instagram, and get with it. Got them personalized betting slips going on, $50 buys.